All right, so learning to code takes a lot of time. But the fact is that for a lot of you watching this, you simply cannot put all of your time onto learning to code or building projects. Because the reality, if you're just starting to learn to code, is that you are trying to do this part time, whether it be before school in the morning or after school, when you get back home, after your homework, and with all the things that you feel like you should be doing, you feel overwhelmed. But the reality is that you can absolutely become a software developer part time. It just takes a little bit of smart planning, some key strategies, as well as simply enough motivation. So in this video, I'm going to show you the step by step process on how I would become a software developer part time in 2025. Starting with step one, which is to be realistic about how much time you actually have. I know that it can be tempting when you're in the beginning motivated to be super ambitious about how much time you're going to be putting into this process. But realistically, life always gets in your way. So if you have budgeted to put like all of your free time into learning the code, eventually something is going to happen, things are going to come up and you're simply not going to be able to do that anymore. So what I would do is set yourself a time goal, which is realistic of how much you can realistically on most days spend on learning the code and then try to stick to that as much as possible, but allow yourself to be flexible. If on some day you have some events come up or your son has a football game or whatever, like allow yourself to be flexible. You don't have to do it absolutely every Every single day and just because you skip one day or you do a little bit less on some days it is okay you're still going to be able to do it and just make sure that you do something each day even if it's just 15 minutes you're still taking one little step closer towards your goal and as long as you keep taking even very small steps towards your goal every single day just remember that you're always going closer to your goal and as long as you just keep going you will eventually get there so after you have done that your step two is to be smart about how you learn the truth is that spending two hours a day doing the right things can be more effective than spending five hours a day doing the wrong things. There are two key rules that I want you to remember. Number one is that if you are a complete beginner, you simply want to pick one course or program or resource that you're going to follow from start to finish. You don't allow yourself to be distracted. You don't stop the course and start another. Just focus on that one thing. You do exactly what they tell you. And that is always what you're going to do every single day. And the second rule is that after you have done some foundational course like this, your next high ROI thing is usually going to be either building a project using skills that you have already learned or if you've already done that then doing perhaps another course learn something new some new path within programming the truth is that if you want to become a software developer the only way to do that is through building real world projects you cannot read or watch your way to success so if i was doing this all over again in my spare time what i would do is pick one project that I am excited about and work on that project every single day. And one of the best kinds of projects is, for example, some kind of dashboard project that accesses real world data and then displays it in some useful way. But in order to do that, you need a reliable and easy way to access huge amounts of real world data, which you can get through today's video sponsor, SERP API. SERP API provides accurate search engine results from the most popular search engines in the world, including Google, YouTube, Bing, and more, in an easy to use JSON object that you can use to build whatever project you want. For example, let's say you want to build a price monitoring app that automatically alerts your Discord server whenever there's a new price drop. What you can do is use SERP APIs Google Shopping API to get access to real-time pricing data. Or let's say you want to build your own AI model and you need a large data set of pre-classified images to train. For this, you can check out the SERP API Google Images API. And what makes SERP API so useful to me is that it allows me to not have to worry about the problems that I usually face when I'm trying to like build a web scraper from scratch, for example. I can spend my time developing the logic of the application, what I actually do with that data, rather than worrying about captures, rotating proxies, changing UI layouts, and all these kind of things. With SERP API, which is one simple call to one of their APIs, I get the data returned to me instantly and reliably. So if you're interested, you can click the link down below in the description or scan the QR code, which I'm going to put on the screen, where you can create your free account and get access to 250 free credits immediately to try it out. Thank you for SERP API for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the third step.
which is to find your dream job and work backwards. So after you've learned kind of the basics, you've maybe built some projects with it, really ingrained these programming basics into your brain. Now you essentially need to choose what kind of developer do you want to become? Do you want to become a web developer? And if so, front end or back end? Do you want to become an AI engineer? Like what are you interested in? And you want to find like a specific job listing of the type of job that you would want to apply for. Then literally look at the job listing and from that job listing, when they list the skills that they need, just build yourself essentially a plan for what you still need to learn before you could apply for it. So essentially just look at what they want, which they tell in the job listing, and then you just go and learn those things and, uh, and practice those things. And now essentially you are the developer that they want. You can even just put the job listing to ChatGPT, ask it to make you a plan, and it will give you like a structured format of the types of things that you should learn. And you can even ask it, okay, which courses should I do to learn this? What kind of project, etc. And that is essentially what you will then focus on next. Again, this allows you to focus only on the things that matter, which means that even if you don't have that much time, you are so effective with your time that it kind of doesn't matter. So if you do that, eventually you will get to the point where you just have the skills that they need and you can apply for the jobs and then eventually land them. But to make this even more effective, you can also apply step number four, which is to implement productivity strategies. And specifically, there's two things that throughout my like four years of learning the code, that I have found to be the most effective. And number one is deep work. Essentially, when you are working, let's say you have your two hour time slot that you can spend, or even one hour, or even 30 minutes, whatever it is, just make sure that whatever that time is, you focus as deeply as you possibly can on your work, which means that you should not have your phone on your desk like, I have here, don't do what I do, do what I say. You should not have notifications on, you should close your door, make sure no one distracts you. Because the thing about the human brain, which you will find interesting, is that if you are distracted, you're taken out of the flow state, which is essentially the state when you're just working and you're just really focused and kind of everything else disappears. It can take you, I think it was up to 15 minutes or even 25 minutes or something like that, for your brain to get back into that focus. And the thing is, when you're in that flow state, that focus state, what you get done is like 5x compared to if you're doing it in a distracted way like again most people are doing most people just have their notifications or they have a multiple tabs open maybe they have a youtube video that they're playing they're constantly being distracted by their mom or their girlfriend or whatever you need to like respectfully tell everyone in your house that for this period of time no one distract me I am focused and you will be surprised how much you can get done when you work like this, even in a little bit of time. And I've made more detailed videos on this specific concept on the channel that you can check out. The second thing is to simply make it fun. A lot of learning and being able to learn just comes down to wanting to learn. Like if you really want to learn what you're trying to learn, you will learn so much more effectively than if it's just a chore to you, something that you're just not interested in. So I hope that one of the reasons why you're learning the code is because you kind of want to learn the Code. And if you don't feel like doing it every day, like find out, like find the reason why this is interesting to you. Find the reason why you started learning in the first place. Because if you can be genuinely interested in what you're doing, I found that that makes it so much easier to learn. Also makes it so much more easier for you to actually get to work because you're excited to learn the next thing. Like I remember when I was learning the code, I would be waiting for the moment when I could get back into learning, back into my course. And like, I'll be looking forward to learning the next thing because I was so excited and so interested in what I was learning. So if you can get into this mindset, then it makes the process so much easier and so much faster. So as a conclusion, this process is really no different to if you were able to do it full time. You just have a little bit less time, but if you're more intentional with your time, then you can actually make progress faster than people who might have more time, but not be intentional. And you even have a kind of an advantage because you have this limited time. It kind of forces you to really think about how can I use this time the most effectively as possible. But if you had a lot of time, then you might not feel like it's not necessary to really be intentional. But if you're distracted, if you're not really focusing on the right things, etc, 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 you know, applying the things that I told you in this video, you would make much less progress in much more time compared to you if you have much less time, but you're doing the right things. So I hope that helped you with that. If you want a specific process on like all the things that you should learn in a step by step format that you can then take and apply these concepts into, you can watch this video right here, because with this video and that video together, you will really have a solid plan for yourself that you can start implementing right now. So watch that video and I will see you in the next video.